Hello, today we're gonna to talk about the Tang and Song achievements. You all asked to learn about inventions and art, and so here we go. So your essential question is, what are the economical, cultural, and technological technological accomplishments of the Tang and the Song Dynasty. So when you write your summary for this one, you want to make sure that you talk about all three of these factors, how these accomplishments affect them economically. That means money. How is money coming in? That also has to do with trade. Cultural. So culture is religion. It's philosophy. It's art. And then also technological accomplishments, which is some of the inventions that we're going to get into. And we're focusing on both the Tang and the Song Dynasty. So go ahead and write that essential question into the top of your notes. What were the economical, cultural, and technological accomplishments of the Tang and Song Dynasties? All right, let's get started. Cities and trade. So we have Changzhong, which is the capital of the Tang Dynasty at this time. It's also the largest city in the world at this time as well. Remember, the world at this point to them is really just the Eastern world. It's just um, Asia, Europe, Africa. That's about as far as they know it exists. And at this time, this is the largest city in the world. It's a mix of many different cultures, especially because we have the silk road going right through the Tang Dynasty. You have many different people from different countries and empires all coming together. It's a giant melting pot of cultures. It's going to be a religious and philosophical center. So think of Changzhong very similar to Timbuktu and Constantinople from some of our other chapters because Changzhong is going to be a trade center, a religious center, a philosophical center, an educational center. It's going to kind of be an all-in-one stop shop. Trade made China very rich and created a very strong economy. The Grand Canal, um, the building of the Grand Canal in the Sui Dynasty helped carry goods to the north and south of China. It's going to um, also enhance the Silk Road because the Silk Road going right through the Tang Dynasty also gives them access to the Grand Canal. We have sea trade becoming more dominant as well. We learned about the cartographers, which are the map makers, becoming much more detailed and being able to know more about where they are on Earth. We're going to see this um, creation and invention of the compass also, which is going to make sea trade much easier and more efficient. We have the development of porcelain. So this is invention of a very thin, beautiful type of pottery. You can see some pictures of that here. And then also the invention of paper money, which is going to be very valuable, not just because it's money, but also because people are no longer having to carry around sacks of gold and whatnot when they are trading or when they are buying things. Paper money is much lighter and easier to travel with, especially if you're traveling very far distances. The Tang Dynasty was home to many different artists and poets. Wu Daozi was a painter who painted murals specifically about Buddhism and nature. We have Li Bo and Du Fo, which were poets during the Tang Dynasty. And then we had also a lot of animal figurines being made during this time. It's that connection back to nature. And some of the local artists would make animal figurines that we find as artifacts. Here is an excerpt of a poem by Li Bo from The Quiet Night Thoughts. Before my bed there is a bright moonlight, so that it seems like frost on the ground. Lifting my head, I watch the bright moon. Lowering my head, I dream that I'm home. That's an excerpt from Li Bo from the poem Quiet Night Thoughts. In the Song Dynasty, more poets and artists. Li Qingzhao was a female poet. So we talked about this before where a lot of times um, females during history are sometimes discounted just because they are female. But poetry was really um, more of kind of like song where, where it was seen as a very feminine art form. And so Li Qingzhao was a very famous female poet during the Song Dynasty. 
And then they took the Tang Dynasty, created porcelain, and then now they are going to advance that even more to Celadon pottery, which has this kind of greenish blue tint to it. And here's some examples of what Celadon pottery might look like. So that's one of our inventions from the Song Dynasty. We have woodblock printing. So woodblock printing is exactly how it sounds. It's a form of printing in which an entire page of words or characters would be carved onto one block of wood, and they would use this almost like a giant stamp. They would cover this in ink and stamp it onto the paper, also a Chinese invention. So um, the woodblock printing was something that was becoming quite popular, so they were able to make books at a much faster pace. Then we also have gunpowder. We talked about this before as well. Gunpowder is a mixture of powders used in guns and explosives. This was actually found by accident. Um, they didn't mean to really make gunpowder, and it was never actually made to be um, explosive in the sense to be used as ammunition. It was originally used as fireworks. So it went from being something that was celebratory to something used in warfare. So we talked a lot about gunpowder this this year um, being traded on the Silk Road to different countries and different empires. And so we are now getting to the point where we're seeing gunpowder being invented in China and being used as a trade item. We have the magnetic compass. This is what is going to help sea trade move forward. It's an instrument that uses the Earth's magnetic field to show direction. So um, if this is going to help us become much more accurate in figuring out where you are, especially if you are on the sea, being able to find out which direction you are headed in. And then we have movable type, similar to woodblock printing, except it's one character or letter at a time, not an entire page. So this is something they could use to create um, letters or poetry, something that is more um, where you just need one character at a time instead of doing mass printing of pages at a time. So that's just a quick overview of some of the art forms and inventions from the Tang and Song Dynasty. You will also watch a video that has more examples of inventions as well, so you'll get some more ideas. So at this point, you're going to mark up your notes. Remember, please mark up your notes, highlighting main ideas in each section and underlining or identifying your keywords and vocabulary. Make sure you ask questions for each column. It could be something as simple as what were the inventions of the Tang Dynasty? What were the inventions of the Song Dynasty? Who were famous poets of the Tang Dynasty? So adding questions like that to your questioning column is part of your points for your Cornell notes, as well as answering the essential question and making sure that you answer um, what are the economical, cultural, and technological advancements of each of these dynasties and making sure that you complete that as part of your summary. And that's it for the Tang and the Song achievements. We are going to do more with inventions in this chapter. You guys are going to do your own little research project. And then you're also going to recreate um, uh, you're going to recreate an actual invention from China of your choice. So we're going to do more with inventions. This was kind of a quick overview.